Welcome to Nomenclature of Ethers and Alcohols. Let's take a look at this first slide. This is just trying to show symmetrical versus unsymmetrical ethers. Of course, symmetrical, both of the alkyl groups on either side of the oxygen is going to be the same. And unsymmetrical, you have an R group or R prime implying that the two alkyl groups are not the same. Here's dimethyl ether. Of course, that's a symmetrical ether, and here's diethyl ether, two ethers, one, two ethyl groups rather, an ethyl group there, and one over here. So both of these are symmetrical. Let's take a look at the next slide. Common names of ethers. Ethyl methyl ether. Notice this is ethyl, this is methyl, alphabetized, but this actually is a common name, but it fits very well systematically. Here's diethyl ether, often called ethyl ether. Ethyl ether is a common name, and you would, you would have to realize it's ethyl on both sides of the oxygen. So strictly speaking, uh, diethyl ether is a better name than ethyl ether, although that ethyl ether is used. Tert butyl isobutyl ether. There's the oxygen. This is one substituent. Of course, this is the tert butyl, one, two, three, four in the tert arrangement, and B, butyl, isobutyl. Notice this is branched, isobutyl, four carbons, so we call it isobutyl ether, tert, butyl, isobutyl ether. And sec, butyl, isopropyl, here's the isopropyl part, and this is sec, butyl, four carbon chain structure with branching or the methyl group coming off of the secondary carbon, which we call sec, butyl. And then here we have cyclohexyl isopentyl ether. Here is the isohexyl part, actually the cyclohexyl part, and this is the isopentyl part. Notice it's branched. One, two, three, four, five carbon chains, so we call it isopentyl. Cyclohexyl isopentyl ether. Substituents are listed in alphabetical order. And here are additional examples systematic naming of ethers, and new uh, name that maybe you've not seen before, methyl group attached to an oxygen, we can call that structure methoxy, ethyl group attached to an oxygen, oxygen, ethoxy. So these names allow us a more convenient way of naming ethers when we name this as a substituent on a carbon chain. Notice we're not calling them ethers, although they are ethers. They have the ether functional group of oxygen between two R groups, but it's so much easier to name them. For example, we see this oxygen methyl group. We recognize that as methoxy. Well, it is a substituent off of this four carbon chain from number two. So we call it two methoxy butane. Here is an ethoxy group ethyl group with an oxygen, we call it ethoxy, so why don't we just name it as a substituent of this chain? Much easier to do that. Also, we have a methyl group substituent. We'll call this number one carbon, so we can call it one ethoxy to get the one in the front, and that must be three, so it's one ethoxy, three methyl pentane, so forth. A curious uh, structure down here, one for diisopropyl 1,4-diisopropoxybutane. Notice butane is in the middle of the molecule, and we call it 1,4-diisopropoxy, which means we got two propoxy groups, one on each side. One is on number one carbon, or this could be number one carbon. If that's number one, then this is 1, 2, 3, 4, or the other way around. But it's 1 and 4, which tells us it's on either, this substituent is on both ends of the molecule, and we call it 1,4, and immediately we know there's two of them. Di also tells us there's two of them. So we name it 1,4-diisopropoxybutane. And of course, here's another example of using this structure as a substituent. We call it butoxy off of this number one, and we, name, we use this as the longest chain of pentane, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have two methyl groups. 2,3-dimethylpentane, and then, of course, 1-butoxy comes first. Let's look a little closer at nomenclature of ethers. Um, ethers are compounds in which 
Oxygen is bonded to two alpha substituents, as you, as you have seen. Symmetrical ether has the following structure, meaning um, two exact same R groups on either side, where the R groups are the same. If the substituents are different, then it's an unsymmetrical ether. Uh, common names for ether compounds are the names of the two alpha substituents in alpha, alphabetical order, followed by the word ether. Uh, very easy to do. And IUPAC calls for the substituents to be named by replacing the YL ending in the name of the alkyl substituent with OXI, oxy. Methyl becomes methoxy. Ethyl becomes ethoxy, as you've seen in the examples. And also shown on this slide. Um, there is one error on this slide. Uh, this structure right here is actually, as shown, it is actually butyl cyclohexyl ether. This is the incorrect name. And you can see other substituents listed here. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. Classification of alcohols. Just as we saw with alkyl halides, alcohols can also be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary based upon the nature of the carbon to which the OH is bonded to. Here we have a primary carbon because it's only bonded to one other carbon. And here we have two R groups, so that's a secondary carbon. Three R groups, we have a tertiary carbon. So this is a tertiary alcohol, secondary alcohol, primary alcohol. And we'll see later on that these different classifications of alcohols have different properties and characteristics in many of the things they do, including reactions. Here are some common names of alcohols. Ethyl alcohol, propyl, isopropyl, isobutyl alcohol. Notice again the iso structure. In the ball and stick models, methyl alcohol, there's the OH. Here's ethyl OH, propyl alcohol shown. And we need to make sure we understand some terminology. The OH is the functional group. Systematic nomenclature uses a suffix to donate a functional group. Suffix, which means the OL at the end of the word, tells us that it is a functional group of an alcohol. Alcohols are named by replacing E at the end of the parent hydrocarbon with the suffix OL. So methanol, ethanol, OL. We've gotten rid of the E, it was methane. Hydrogen was replaced by an OH, now it becomes methanol. So whenever you see the OL, you, you know that it is an alcohol, it contains no H. The other uh, term that we need to make sure we distinguish from a functional group is a substituent. We've been using that term quite often. The OH in this case is not a substituent because it is a functional group. So we're going to name it and call it an alcohol. Bromine here is a substituent. When there's both a functional group and a substituent, the functional group gets the lowest number. So we're going to number in order to get the lowest number on the OH, or the OH is bonded to the carbon with the lowest number. So here we got a three carbon chain, propyl group, propane, drop the E, add OL because we have an oxygen, it's on number one. So we put one in front of propanol, and if that's number one, then this is number three, so it's three bromo, one propanol. Bromo is a prefix because it is a substituent. OH is a suffix because it is a functional group. We put the one in there so we know where the OH is. It could have been on the number two. And even, po I mean, it could have been on number three, very unlikely because of the structure and the, and the bromine there, but it tells us exactly where it is. Here's four chloro, two butanol. Um, the OH is on number two. We number it one, two. We don't number it one, two, three. We want the lowest number on the functional group, so we put 2-butanol, and if that's 2, that must be 4, that tells us where the chlorine, the chloro group is, 4-chloro, 2-butanol, and also here we have three substituents, two of them are methyl groups, so we're going to call them dimethyl, both of them are number 4, because we're going to number from right to left to get the lowest number on the OH, so when there is both a functional group and a substituent, the functional group gets the lowest number, as we've seen before, we keep following that rule. Here's a, some systematic names of alcohols, just additional examples. The uh, condensed version and the bond line way of writing a molecule, you can see 3-pentanol, 1, 2, 3, 
Also, one, two, three, doesn't matter which way you remember, it's gonna still be three. Three pentanol, and notice you've not seen this before probably, but if we move this three right in front of the OL, it's explicitly clear where the OH is. More commonly, it's three pentanol, because chemists know the three is telling us where the OH is on the five carbon chain. But years ago, and still commonly used, quite often you'll see the three moved over so it's explicitly telling us OH is on number three, but it still means the same thing as three pentanol. Three methyl one hexanol, OH is on number one carbon. So if that's one, then this is three, three methyl one hexanol, but we can move that one right over in front of the OL. The three always stays in front of the prefix of the substituent. That never has changed. Here is another uh, type of compound that we need to keep in mind, and that is diols. We're going to see later on compounds that have two OH groups, we call them diols. That makes sense. And we can tell exactly where the OHs are by numbering in the direction we get the lowest numbers. One, two, three, four. So it's two, four, hexa, hexane, diol. Di, again, there's two of them. One's on two, one's on four. Or we can move both of those numbers over, as we did before, right in front of the diol. Tell us explicitly where it is. And here's a line bond drawing, uh, four methyl, two, two, penten, pentane diol, one, two, three, four, five. The OHs are on number one, two, it's on number two and three, so it's two, three, pentane diol, one, two, three, four, five. If this is two and this is three, that must be four. So four, four methyl, two, three, pentadiol, or we can move the two and the three over in front of the diol. Okay, moving on, systematic names of alcohols. Again, we can name it in a very similar way. The parent, as we've seen in the past, the parent hydrocarbon is the longest chain that contains the functional group. Number the chain in the direction that gives the functional group the lowest possible number. Key thing here is the longest chain that contains the functional group. It must contain the functional group. You can find a chain longer than five carbons here, one, two, three, four, five, six, but it doesn't contain the OH. We have to find the longest carbon chain that contains the OH, and then we can name the OH off of number one as one pentanol, and then the ethyl group is a substituent off of this five carbon chain. We call it ethyl. You can see these two other examples as well. Um, pay attention to the number of the substituent only if you get the same number for the functional group in both directions. Um, here's 2-chloro-3 pentanol, 1, 2, 3, for the OH, 1, 2, 3. So we have, can be either way, but we're going to number it from left to right so we get the lowest number on chlorine. So it's going to be 2-chloro-2 pentanol, not 4-chloro. It's better as 2-chloro. And these are two other examples showing the same thing. Uh, we use systematic naming, of course, as we've been doing for alcohols. If there is more than one substituent, they are listed in alphabetical order. No surprise there. Bromine, bromo group, ethyl group. Bromo comes before ethyl. That gets the lowest number, so we number this one, two, eight carbon chain, two octanol. One ethyl group is on number four, and the bromine is on number seven. You can see these two other examples as well. A suffix is a prefix. A substituent is a prefix. A functional group is a suffix. Again, we've said that before, but just to keep in mind, methyl, ethoxy, these are all substituents. Functional groups like alcohols, OH, are suffixes, and that's a general rule of thumb. And a little bit of review. A, in an alcohol, the OH is a functional group. A functional group is the center of reactivity in a molecule, as we'll see as we get into reactions. Here are just a summary of the, of the rules. Determine the parent compound, parent hydrocarbon containing the functional group. And some of this may be distorted on the slides, but there were other examples. Here are, again, listing the, the steps or the rules. The functional group suffix should get the lowest number. If the same number of first functional group suffix is obtained in both directions, chain is numbered in the direction that gives the substituent the lowest possible number. If there's more than one substituent, the substituents are cited in alphabetical order. And that concludes our discussion.